Okay, my name is Josh McEvoyk, and my background is as a structural engineer, and now I'm doing a PhD at UCL. Um, I'm talking about retrofitting of low-income um, structures, uh, not just in Nepal, but I'll also be talking about case studies in Nepal and Peru, um, but that's really looking at the wider issue of how you retrofit non-engineered structures. Um, now, in earthquakes, it, the collapse of buildings is what causes um, fatalities for a large number of uh, people. Masonry is particularly guilty because it's heavy and brittle, um, and also non-engineered or poorly constructed buildings all around the world are also the prime cause of, um, of, of death or major casualties in large earthquakes. So the question is, what do you do about non-engineered structures? Um, given the large number of existing non-engineered structures at risk in high-risk locations, um, replacement isn't an option, so retrofitting is, the, um, is one way. Um, and I'm going to be talking about external retrofitting, which is the fitting of a mesh to the structure retrospectively. Um, this is one of the examples that I'm talking about, PP band technology. Um, I'm not particularly advocating the two um, technologies that I'm talking about today, but I'm just giving these as examples. And this particular one is um, an IKEA flat pack strap, which you use to wrap around the wall, internal and out and external, preventing the separation of walls. Now the real question is the application of whatever said technique. Um, in a location such as Nepal, um, you have the problem that I raised before where the vast majority of buildings are non-engineered. So the use of design standards and codes isn't perhaps appropriate where the majority of buildings are self-built. Um, the approach that was used in this particular pilot study was a, um, a training program for rural masons. Um, and the, the important point about the training program was that it was hands-on and it was trying to raise simple rules of thumb rather than relaying um, design codes of practice or teaching how to design. Um, as an example of simple rules of thumb, um, we were teaching over six days, when I say we, it was um, with a local NGO who do this type of thing for a living. Um, we were teaching over six days simple rules of thumb for construction materials which are used regularly. Previously, it was reinforced masonry, and um, again, just giving simple rules of thumb, such as the maximum length to height ratios you might want to have in, uh, in a building before you consider buttressing and return walls, etc. Here you have an RC, um, an RC structure, um, again, very prevalent even in rural Nepal, um, teaching simple rules of thumb like the correct closure of stirrups, um, shear links around, um, around beams, where many of those are open and the continuation of reinforcement through columns and other simple rules of thumb that don't really add cost to the structure. And then finally, on the final day, we went through the basics of the application of the retrofitting technique, the polypropylene mesh. It was just to show the concepts um, in the real polypropylene mesh, which you'll see in a, in, a, in a moment. Then you have additional features to consider, such as ring beams overlapping at doors, windows, and through openings, etc. The next portion was a public demonstration because, as I said, these are self-built or um, non-engineered. So the idea was to teach those who do the building, the masons, but also those who are the homeowners themselves the, to understand the need to retrofit their homes and some of the simple things that can be done. This is a low-tech shake table where you've got a, um, a steel frame and a, and, a tier, and a steel top connected with horizontal springs. This guy here is just winching up the, the table and letting it go. It shakes, it cracks, and, and shows... Um, on that previous drawing, if you notice, you would have seen conjugate shear cracking across, the, across one of the walls, an outer plane collapse. The point is that those are the types of failures that you actually see very prevalently just walking around anywhere in the, in the Kathmandu Valley rural area. So people will recognize those damaged states on their own homes. Um, this was an application of the retrofit um, on a real house, allowing the masons to apply what they've learned um, on a, on a full-size structure. Um, this is just showing some of the additional features that are needed for a full-scale retrofit, such as um, a base beam. This is something that's actually cast in on the wall and uh, to give a good anchor. Um, in this case, a ring beam was, um, was also built at the top and proper tie into the roof, etc. So the idea was the application on a real house. But the question then is, okay, we've come along and we've done this um, to try and give simple rules of thumb to those who are building. What happens in the long term? Are they going to keep on doing it? So, Rather than wait 10 years, we went to Peru to have a look at previous examples of similar retrofitting programs that had happened, uh, in this case, eight years previously. Um, the retrofitting technique in this case is this one at the bottom, which is a steel mesh reinforcement. You apply an external steel mesh um, uh, vertically and horizontally around the structure or a ring beam, preferably not a ring beam. 
um, and then you mortar over it to um, you, you mortar over it to, to, to protect it. Um, that reinforcement um, technique worked very well in 2001 and 2007 earthquakes to the extent where the government then decided to create several hundreds of homes, new homes, new adobe homes using that, um, that technique. And that last graph was just showing the organogram of how the, cas how the, the knowledge was cascaded to the communities in order to self-build. The NGO um, and, the, um, and the university and the government organization taught several masons from the community who then taught or oversaw the self-build of a large number of houses in the community. Um, but the, the problem for me coming on eight years later is to see that those initial houses were built very well. But eight years later, many of the lessons were learned. And you can see very simple lessons that haven't been applied in later constructions. And this is just to show that the actual cost of the retrofit and the reconstruction is actually quite small. It's, um, it was a, the, the materials are a small portion of the actual construction cost of the house. But when you consider also the um, relative incomes of those communities, it's still a significant amount, showing that some kind of incentivization is also required. Um, so the main, the main points are non-engineered is bad, um, design codes of practice isn't a solution because the whole point is they're not looked at, um, and there were other conclusions there as well, but that's the main one that I wanted to show. <laughs> um, and this is here because tomorrow I'm off to Sacraban, so I'll be speaking to you, Anna, thanks for that. Um, because my experience in seismic retrofitting, um, and I'd like you to think about and maybe discuss with me over lunch how some of those lessons might apply to the construction types and the damage types in Sacraban. Okay. Thank you.